the marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the street. All the builders tools are silent. No more time to harvest seed. Busy housewives cease their labor in the courtroom. No debate. Work on earth has been suspended as the king comes through the gate. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding and now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. You'll understand where we're at by the end of the service. Uh, didn't know that was coming because uh, I don't sing, as you know. But I'm going to be obedient to my Lord. And if he says go, I'm going to go. And if he says do, I'm going to do. I'm not sure who that's for. Probably just me, but there you go. Um, 2006, I was in class, and uh, me and Miss Wendy were getting our exhorters license. And at the end of 2006, my dad died in 2007 in a whirlwind of about three weeks. Uh, went in, put in an application, and they said, okay, you're trying out for a church next week. Boom, three weeks later, uh, God had told us we're going west. We didn't know where that meant. Uh, three weeks later, we were pastoring 30 miles west of where we lived. God, we covered what you said to do, right? God, we covered exactly what you told us to do. Uh, Mr. Nelson, can I borrow you for a moment? Sit in the chair for me. Uh, three years later, God said, you're going west. We left Suck Creek, Tennessee. Hey, beautiful. It's pretty. Thank you. We went northwest another 20 miles and pastured Cartwright, Tennessee. Did what God said, go west, right? 2012, God said, go west. If I go much farther west, I'm going to be wet. Uh, I'm about 100 miles from the ocean. Um, there's a church opened up in Colorado, in Aurora, Colorado, and a church in Springfield, Oregon. And we had applied for both. Neither one came through. And as we were following God, the church in Sweet Home came open. And God said, don't you love boots? Love them. Oh. Yeah, you want to help? Yeah, you're doing good. Yeah. Let me help, help here. So we look up the church in Sweet Home, Oregon, and it was Harvest Christian Center, but online it said Sweet Home Church of God. Uh, so we look it up, and uh, two things we noticed about the church from Tennessee. One was that it uh, needed a parking lot. The other was that the parsonage needed a roof. The parsonage is no longer with us. We send it down the road, but the, um, it's eight years later, the parking lot still needs to be replaced. I've been here for eight years, and within three weeks is eight years. Father, I pray for my brother Jim. 
God, I pray for him and his family. I pray, God, that everywhere his foot touches, you give him the land. God, I pray that every part of his family is blessed. And God, I pray that you heal any sickness in his body and that you touch his family. God, I pray for Maddie, for his sisters and for his mom. God, I pray that you heal them mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. God, I pray that you meet every need. Every need, Lord, every need. Can you throw me a towel, Wendy? God, I pray that you touch my brother. Let his ministry grow. Bless him, Father, all that he does. In the precious name of Jesus. Our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for letting me be obedient. For you being obedient. This week I was walking around our parking lot praying over the Jericho March. And as I was praying, and I've, I've seven times walking around it. And, and, and come in the mornings and do that for seven days. And, and I'm believing God for a new parking lot. We're imagining greater this year. And, and I, I'm praying over the parking lot. And the Lord spoke to me and said, 65. That's the number of pump bobs that I made for, for the church. And I wasn't sure about the number. Miss Kathy looked it up and studied it. And then Sterling gave me a word on it this morning. But, but God said, 65. I said, 65 what, Lord? 6,500? I can do that. We can come up with that. And I think we got about 11,000 in the bank, uh, in, in the building fund. I can come up with that for a parking lot, right? And, and he said, imagine greater. And I said, 65,000? There's there, uh, no. I don't, how? He said, trust me. Just do your part. Well, what's my part, Lord? He said, sow a seed and keep walking and share your vision with others. Now, I've been in ministry 25 years, and I've never once went outside the walls of our church and asked for money. I just don't. If you owe me money, I've never asked you for it. I will never ask you for it. I will go to my grave before I would ask you for a penny that you owed me. I just, just, just not who I am. I will not do it. I would rather be broke than to ask. God said, do this. And I said, no. And he said, I want you to do it. So I came in and I wrote a little letter. And I made it. I said, when do you fix it? Because I, I want the... the, the punctuation and I don't want too many commas in there she said you mean post it I went no she said well I'll put it to go up in the morning I went no and I wrestled with God finally Saturday I put it online Miss Kathy called and she said and online I put it like this if every person if if a thousand people give sixty five dollars we, we, we have our 65,000. God said he'd do the rest. If 100 people give 650, we got our 65,000. And, and I don't even know what the parking lot's going to cost. I don't have an accurate number. I don't know. Because we haven't had one in years, and we know that with the climate in America right now, oil prices are shooting up with everything that's going on. And, and I don't know, but God said, this is it. And he said, do it. And I said, okay, Lord, well, if, 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 uh, you know, if 100 people give... 6,500 or 10 people give 6,500. We got it, right? But we don't have 10 people that can give that. God said, I didn't ask you that. I said, just share, keep walking, and to believe me for it. Now that stretches me. But I put it out there and I'm sharing it here today. And I get a call from Miss Kathy and she said, We're taking two of those $100 spots. And I said, God, I'm putting my 65 in this week. And for the next nine months, I'm putting 65 in, and I'm giving my 650, and I'm going to do, and I don't know how he's going to do it. All I'm telling you is, and I don't know what it means, but I'm just telling you God's going to get us a new parking lot. Now, how? I don't know, but he said to imagine greater. And he said he was going to stretch me to get us there, and he's going to stretch us. This morning, I want you to know as we begin this service that this is not me. I don't do this. I don't know if this is for me, for you. I don't know if it's for you. But some of us need to learn to stretch. 
And I want to share with you this morning, totally different than I did first service already. But I want to share with you, because never in my wildest dream would I have believed I would have went online and said, if 100 people get $650 this year. And let me give you the significance of 65. You ready? The number of man is six. 65 is just beyond what man can do. The number of God is seven in the Bible. He's got to do his part. And basically, he'll come meet us if we'll go beyond what we can do. You say, well, how important is a parking lot to me? More than you'll ever know. Because I want the world to know what God's doing here. We've got this beautiful church and the Spirit of God moving. And I know most of us can't afford to give. But God can. If you can't, then pray. But if you can, give. If not, pray. I want to read you the scripture this morning the Lord gave me. And I want you to hear what the Holy Spirit says to you this morning. Psalms chapter 3. The first Psalms that actually has a header. You don't need to stand this morning. I'm going to read it to you and then we're going to break it down. Psalms chapter 3 and chapter 4 we believe was written. Most, most theologians believe written in the same day. The psalmist David writes, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which of, say of my soul, there is no help from him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory are the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid down and slept. I awake, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me. O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies. Upon thy cheekbone thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. Father, bless the word this morning. Let my lips speak life to your people. Let them receive from your Holy Ghost. And Father, at the end of this service, I know we're doing it differently, but even during this service, while I'm preaching, let them begin to receive from you and act in obedience to what you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe that Psalms 3 and 4 were written together. This is found in 2 Samuel chapters 15 through 18. This story is found there, 2 Samuel 15 through 18. Robert and, and CJ, one of you guys, I'm praying that one of you guys, when you get a chance, would learn how to work that camera. Because I like to move and we don't have a camera person today to do that. So not today, but, but we want someone, because I, I want to run and I can't. Uh, maybe you guys or somebody else in the church could step up and learn to do that uh, and, and learn to move the camera so that I can run. If you read this story, here's what was happening. David's son Absalom had come against him. And he had brought 10,000 men with him to come against David. He had brought 10,000 men, or at least that's the number that David uses, and he had come against him. And the story tells us that, that when they came against him, that David was in peril. He was in the worst time of his life. And this is actually what is said of his friends. You're in such a place that not even God will help you anymore. You're in such a place that God will not help you anymore. Spurgeon writes this of that verse right there. Spurgeon writes, If all the trials which come from heaven, all the temptation which ascends from hell, and all the crosses which arise from the earth could be mixed and pressed together, they would not make a trial so terrible as which is contained in this verse. It is the most bitter of all afflictions to be led to fear that there is no help for us in God. First verse in Scripture. To believe that there's no help from God. 
Verses 3 and 4, David writes, But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory. You're one who lifts my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice. He heard me from his holy hill. My shield, my guard, my glory. You lift my head. Verses 5 and 6, he said, I lay down and slept, but I awoke because you sustained me. I will not be afraid of the 10,000 who have set themselves against me. Listen to what David writes here. Listen, he says, I cried. You're my shield. You sustained me. You heard me. Me, I was not afraid. I lay down to sleep. But notice what David did not say. David did not say, God delivered me. David did not say, God delivered me. He said, You sustained me. But he didn't say, You delivered me. This is the worst time in David's life. His own son. Brought an army against him. And David is praying to God. And God is hearing him. And God is not delivering. But just sustaining. Move on. David then begins to talk about what the Lord in verses 7 and 8 did for in the past. You struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. Broken the teeth of the ungodly. All things that you've done in the past. Salvation belongs to you, Lord. Your blessings upon your people. And then chapter 4, we believe, is written that chapter 3 was written in the morning and chapter 4 at night. Verse 1. Your translation may be different, but I will give it to you in the original Hebrew so you understand it. At least the one word that has been changed. Hear me when I call, O God, David writes. O God of my righteousness, thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Psalms 4.1, let me read it again. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Some translations have changed the word enlarge to he has relieved me. Now you can use the word relieve there if you choose. But it says he has enlarged me in my distress. And I want you to catch what he said. Because I dare say there's not a man or woman alive that has prayed this prayer. We have never prayed to God, or at least I had never prayed until this week to God. I'm in the worst shape of my life. God, stretch me to handle it. I've said, God, deliver me. God, set me free. Break the chains. Bind it up. Fix it. Hey, don't, don't let this happen. But David says, when I was in my worst stress, God stretched me to handle What was coming my way. Now I want you to hear this this morning. We will never imagine and believe God for more. Unless we allow God to stretch us. Religion has put us in a box. Like it or not. Religion has put us in a box. You want me to prove it? Woo! I wish we had them old timey services. You know where they run? You know where they run? They jump out the windows and they run across the pond. Glory to God, I wish the spirit fell like that. And they hug the old pot belly stoves. Man, you remember those services? You know what I'm talking about. People's legs grew back. I wish they had services like that. Do you know that's limiting God? Because you've never heard anybody say they jumped on the ocean and ran to uh, 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 England, have you? Because when we say they ran across a pond, we put a limit. When we say we wish it was like it used to be, we had a limit. We don't allow God to stretch us between what we've seen or what we've heard. I said to God this week, I have never once asked money to the general public for a need of the church. And God said, well, then let me stretch you just a little bit. Let me stretch you just a little bit. I can never remember a time I've washed someone's feet while I was preaching. Except first service. And 
And actually, in the sound booth, they're going to get ready to take over for Bigfoot at the end of this service. Whichever one back there is, is armed and dangerous. And, and, and at the end of this service, he's going to come up and I'm going to wash his feet. Because the Lord told me to, Bigfoot. I don't sing, but God said, I want you to sing. And I said, it don't fit the service. He said, I didn't ask you what it fit. All I asked you to do was to be obedient. I'm stretching you. Because you will never imagine beyond where you're at if God does not stretch you beyond where you're at. Listen to what David said after that. Now listen to what David said. Chapter 3 is, I'm crying, I'm hurting, my life's falling apart. Help me, God! Then he says, God stretched me. Then he says, verse 2, O oh, you sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with him in your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There will be many that say, who will show any of us good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart that in the time that thou corn and thou wine increased more than them when the corn and wine increased, I will both lay down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only make me dwell in safety. David went from begging God for deliverance to preaching salvation to the, to the ones that were coming against him. Now, if we were to talk about what's going on in America right now, there's this giant buzz of Christians about how bad it's going to get, how awful it's going to get. Oh, gosh, if you go on social media, anybody else want to puke? Anybody else sick of hearing it from Christians? Well, I just, it's going to get, it's just going to get, I just, I just, oh, just shut up. Let God stretch you a little bit. Well, I know I'm going to make some people mad. They're going to turn it off and never listen again. But let me tell you something. If you would allow God to stretch you, you wouldn't worry about who's in office as much. And you'd worry about who's on the throne more. David said, David said that, yeah, you give God praise. It's all right. So here's what David said. David said, this is the worst time of my life. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. We believe he wrote verse chapter 3 at the beginning of the morning. We believe at the end of the day, he writes this one. And he says, and the Lord, when I was in my worst distress, he enlarged me. And now, hey, let's talk to my enemy about Jesus. Not Jesus. Jesus wasn't there. But yeah, you can give him praise. It's not bad. Listen, guys, listen. Here's the part that we need to catch. Through no fault of our own. And I believe that. Through no fault of our own. The world. Our training. Our families. And even our churches. Have limited us. And it's time. That we. Learn to not know our limits. We should never know our limit. Because when you know your limit. You limit God. When you know as far as you can go, when someone says to me, uh, don't you dare wash my feet, I, I'm not going to let that happen, then you just limited God. When someone says, I don't dance, that's not what I do. What you just said to God is, I'm going to limit my worship to what I know. How much abundantly above could you get if people in this church at the end of this service Broke out and danced that have never danced before. Come on, I'm serious. Where could you go with God if you broke that limit? What about if you actually fasted? Well, I do fast. I fasted 45 days of using pencils. Well, that's good. I hadn't used one in 45 years. There you go. Wow. That's not what I'm talking about. God, you know what? 
I fasted using Charmin toilet paper for 40 years. We don't buy Charmin. That's not a fast. We buy Scott. Listen, the point is this. Everything in David's life changed when he said, instead of God delivering me, God enlarged me. This week, I sung a whole verse of a song. I can't remember ever doing that. I may have, but I can't remember it. That's a stretch for me. That's a stretch, especially when she started singing, because they'd been easy for me to drop out. But he said, no. I didn't want to touch Jimmy's feet. I didn't want to wash yours, Tim. That's not the point. The point is simply this. The point is, when will we as the body of Christ decide to let God stretch us beyond the limits that we placed on ourselves or the world's placed upon us and we begin to see, give him praise, it's good. Let him have praise in the house. When is the last time you tore the roof off to get somebody to Jesus? Come on now. They couldn't get them to Jesus, so they ripped the roof off and lowered him down. When's the last time you pushed through the crowd to get to church? I can't let the windshield wipers push through the ice in the morning. It looks cold out there. I'm staying at the house. I wish God would move on my behalf. How about God, you just stretch me to deal with where I'm at? about God I know things are getting ugly in America but you know what the more God stretches me I'm straight up with you the more peace I get in my life I'm like people like well what are you going to do I'll tell you what I'm going to do the greatest miracle we ever had was when Jerusalem was under Roman rule Jesus the greatest miracle we ever had was Christ death burial and resurrection and Jerusalem was not even under Jerusalem's rule they were under Roman rule you know what I say bring it on well the greatest moves of God in the world right now is in China and you'd get die if you if you get caught sharing Jesus and the gospel spreading faster than any nation in the world Maybe God just wants to stretch America. Maybe he just wants to take me and you. What if he's speaking to somebody right now that they ought to be up here washing somebody in this church's feet? What if when we start some worship, and I told them to play something slow, but they're going to pick up a song that's not super fast, but uh, fast enough that we can worship to. uh, What What if you did something beyond where you've ever been? What if you let God stretch you one little bit? You've been praying for your child to be saved. And your child has seen you be the most conservative, born again child of God that is gritting your teeth and barely getting through, tiptoeing to get to heaven. And and, and you're telling them they need what you got. When what you got is barely good enough for you to hang on to with the skin of your teeth. Oh, I know. Y'all should have come to first service because let's be honest, I was gentle. See, that's the problem. I get rid of all my gentleness and now I'm just mean. I'm not mean. I'm sharing with you from the bottom of my heart. If God's people never let God expand them. Well, I would give a word or a prophecy, but what if I'm wrong? Well, then repent and move on. What if you're right and somebody needs to hear it? Well, I just don't do that. That's the problem. We're limiting God. We're limiting God by walking within the limits of what we've built for ourselves. And if you think you've got a crazy pastor now, You ain't seen undignified yet. Because if he tells me to run these aisles and run the top of those chairs, I'm going to expect him to hold them down. Because here I go. Because if my obedience to what I know has hindered this church from moving forward, it won't happen anymore. 
because I am done with small living. And I'm done with my imagination being this big. If David, a man after God's own heart, can cry out to God for deliverance, and God says, okay, I'll stretch you. What if you can't afford that 650? Well, guess what? Dish Network's 100 bucks a month. There's 100 I can give. Didn't get any amens on that one, did I? I say this out of absolute love. How many's tired of the enemy running amok in your life? How many's sick of it? We're begging God to do something. Maybe, just maybe, God's saying, I've been trying to stretch you to set you free for a long, long time. I've been trying to grow you. I saw this verse. I've been so messed up all week. Man, I just wanted to walk into walls. I mean, I've been out here walking around this parking lot. I mean, it's 28 degrees. I'm out here walking around the parking lot, wheezing like a goat, going, God, was that six laps or seven? Okay, I better do another one. I don't want to be short a lap. God's talking to me. He's telling me this. He's telling me that. And I'm like, slow down. I'm trying to breathe over here. And then I'm standing over here worshiping. I'm doing what you called me to do. Now you tell me to sing. You got it. What do you want me to sing? Because if that's what it takes to stretch me to see greater things from him. If I'm what's holding him back. In fact. The only thing holding him back in your life is the limit you place. That's it. That's the only thing that hinders him is the limits we place on him. You say, well, he didn't deliver David. Sure he did a million times. But he had to stretch him a few times along the way. Think about this this morning. What happens if you actually let God stretch you more than the corn and the wine? What would it be like to lay down in peace and sleep knowing that everything's going to be all right? Well, Pastor, if gas is going to go back up to $5 a gallon, I know, ain't it cool? I wonder how God's going to give me the money to get gas because I'm going to be driving. Okay. Okay, I don't have a vehicle on my property that has four wheels that gets better than 12 miles a gallon. He's going to have to give me a little extra. Might as well throw a tune-up in on my old truck while he's there, hadn't he? What would you do if God said you got 30,000 men And you're coming against 130,000. And I want you to send 29,700 home. Pick up 300 flower pots and 300 candles. And let's go to war. God, I don't have enough men with 30,000. I didn't ask you if you had enough. I asked you to go get some flower pots and some candles and let's go to war. See, my job isn't to ask him how we're going to do it. It's going to say which store do I buy the flower pots and the candles at? Which song do you want me to sing? You want me to run this morning, Lord, or dance? Because someone here needs your dance. Someone needs you to be undignified. Someone needs you to miss a meal. <laughs> Some of us just need to miss a meal, right? <laughs> I just want to know one thing this morning. 
Are you willing to unlearn your limits? Because they're not your limits. They're the limits you've placed on God. Two stories and I'm done. I promise. Two stories, I'm done. Because I've been up here a long time. Two stories, I'm done. The first one is this. Mountain Meadows Church of God. Mountain Meadows Church of God. Udawa, Tennessee. We had an Easter program. My mom came. I asked her to come. She's on her walker. Had both knees replaced. She's feeling really, really bad. She had both knees replaced. Feeling really, really bad. She's on the walker. She can't seem to heal. She gets there. God told me to wash her feet. I said, no. He said, I want you to wash your feet. I said, no. Finally said, okay, I will. I go to the back where she's sitting, growling, snarling, to wash her feet. I wish now I'd have washed them another hundred times. I can't even answer a phone call now. She's gone on. She's growling at me. I'm growling at her, and I'm praying over her feet. Next morning, she calls me and says, my legs don't hurt today. And two days later, she said, I don't need this walker anymore. She said, they thought they were going to have to go back in and do, replace my knees again. And I was going to be another three months. And she said, when you prayed, my legs got warm. And I prayed in rebellion. Second story. Not one disciple could have imagined that the Messiah they'd waited on 4,000 years, dying was about to turn everything around. They wanted to hold him right there with them. And the truth is, his plan was far greater than anything they could see. What will you let go of? What will you turn loose of? What will you let God stretch you on to get where you're going with him? Stand with me. So here's the altar call this morning. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time. If you need a miracle, maybe you need to let God stretch you. Maybe God's been speaking something to you. This morning, maybe he hasn't. I don't know. I don't feel like I've presented it well enough, but here we are. So I'm trusting the Holy Spirit that he did his work. This is what I know. The more he stretches me, the more freedom I have in him. And I'm believing that if you will let go and let him stretch you, he's going to release power, anointing, and authority in you. And you're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders in your life and those lives around you. Unless you continue to know it all. You've got to let him stretch you. You've got to let him stretch you. You've got to let him stretch you. So we're going to worship. We're going to open the altars. You can come pray. If you see somebody you need to wash their feet, you go grab it. If you need somebody to lay hands on Maybe you need to get saved. You come on. We're going to open it up for that. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I'm opening this altar. God, I give it to you. I give it to you. Lord, I am unworthy of anything, but you are worthy of everything. So I'm asking you that your Holy Spirit do the work. I'm asking you that the word that they've already received be magnified. And that they be loosed right now beyond where they have been to see what you have for them. Let us imagine greater in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on, altar's open. Don't wait. Come on.